And so Hope Hicks' little white lies don't look so little mm -hmm. when you piece all of those pieces of information and they, together. Are they white lies or are they white lies? I guess yeah. it just depends on how you pronounce the word. White lies. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and, and so bringing in Ned uh, on, the, on those little white lies, uh, you heard me make the distinction earlier, and it is one that is legally significant. Uh, we only know that she told, as she put it, white lies for Trump because yesterday she was in a setting where she had to tell the truth, Ned. Well, well that, that's exactly right, and, and I think you have to uh, consider the nature of those white lies, and why did she have to tell those white lies, or whatever color the, the lies were in the first place? Was there this issue, Ari, of corrupt intent? Uh, was there corrupt intent when on board Air Force One, she was the one relaying messages from Don Jr. on the ground back to the president and back and forth, crafting this, what we now know to be false narrative, about a meeting that, as they said at the time, was for adoptions? Why did they feel the need to lie about it. Was it just some natural compulsion uh, to tell untruths? Or, and this is what Mueller and his team are going to be looking at, was it an affirmative attempt on the part of the president and his close aides to obstruct the Mueller probe? And that's a $64,000 question. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you lay that out, and, and Carrie, uh, we are all familiar with government aides and campaign aides in both parties uh, stating untruths. Uh, to be clear, putting aside any moral debate, uh, untruths are not typically illegal unless, as Ned and others have just laid out, they are attempts to obstruct. Steve Bannon, who has his own issues and his own agenda, uh, famously unloaded on Hope Hicks, according to the book Fire and Fury, as well as in other settings, about her potential liability, her not getting that while many times uh, things always seem to come up Trump, so she had a lot of faith, it seemed, in that process. Uh, Steve Bannon and others said that she was exposing herself to liability. Uh, I want your analysis of that, as well as some new reporting that was just handed to me here since I sat down. Sources in and out of the White House, according to NBC News, expressing, quote, shock tonight at Hicks' departure. One source telling us, quote, it won't be the same without hope here underscoring her presence in Trump world used to feel permanent, and they're going on to say that in the meetings today, as Hope uh, discussed this with her colleagues, uh, they, they describe, according to NBC, the meetings as, quote, very emotional, lots of tears and hugs, and then adds, and this is interesting, uh, Kerry, in at least this report, brand new, Hicks did not give the group a specific reason for her departure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. This was a real surprise. I think there were a lot of people who thought Hope Hicks would be there for the long haul. Uh, she's very important to Trump. We've called her, her his security blanket. Uh, he was her gatekeeper. She's extraordinarily important in that operation. Our reporting in the last hour or so shows that it's it's complicated. Um, it looks like it's almost a response to yesterday, but we're getting a lot of pushback on that. When I say yesterday, the you know the revelation that she acknowledged white lies, the eight hours with the committee, that that you know feels like a trigger, but it's it's unlikely to be that. That it's a a big broad swath of reasons. You know, Carrie, uh, can that, I put, can I push back on your pushback? Yeah. Do you have time yeah. for that? I mean, that takes a long time. That's double pushback. But uh, we hear that from the sources we reported. We're hearing that as well from our, in our Washington bureau. And yet, if you are a messaging expert and you have mm -hmm. a Russia interview yes. scheduled and you have mm -hmm. public criticism laying out why you have criminal exposure for obstruction, mm -hmm. statements made not by the opponents, not by the enemy, but by other Trump aides, and you were planning this for a, a whole wide range of reasons and not mm -hmm. under a rush, why would you, do you think, have this come out in a rush the day after without a specific reason? Wouldn't all other messaging disciplines suggest you would wait a week or three or six if this was just a long plan thing? Yeah, but I think you point to exactly why this is so perplexing. Even the sources we've talked to have mentioned that, that if this was long in the planning, uh, uh, that it, it just doesn't it doesn't make sense. Why was there not a, a successor lined up? Um, the timing looks very odd. Uh, it raises a lot of questions. But again, there's so much about this White House that mm. often does it that doesn't sort of compute. And there's a lot of questioning that comes with it. But I think you point to a, a question we're trying to answer right mm -hmm. now. The timing the timing is odd, and you're right. Well, and um, let me and, let me throw it to Maya. <laughs> um, would you allow me a little real talk? I'm going to give you real talk. Uh, it's so perplexing, it kind of seems like maybe people aren't telling us the whole oh, story. Oh, truth? Yeah. Oh, maybe a little white lie there. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, look, 
Hope Hicks isn't just close to Trump. She was his non-family advisor on the campaign, one yeah. of the longest serving non-family advisors that he has had affiliated with him in the White House. So this is really actually quite shocking. Mm. And from a political standpoint, the fact that there was no leak that she was thinking about leaving before right. yesterday says speaks volumes. Right. So look, I just, my, yeah. there's just the real you're talk here it. is you're, you're this it. is just straight You're up. You're calling it. You don't buy it. She, I don't buy it. You don't buy she, it. She, I want to go to, out. I, and I want to go to one more point for Kerry, uh, who's who's a, a student of politics for a long time, and I know how closely you followed the 2016 campaign. Kerry, take a look back at this moment on that same day, an exchange with Donald Trump and Katie Turr, who broke this other story tonight, about, again, this email discussion. Does that not give you pause? No, it gives me no pause. If they to have, have, they have a have foreign a, we government might as well able Hey, you know what gives me more pause? That... A person in our government, crooked Hillary Clinton, what here's what gives me well, be quiet, I know you want to, you know, save her, that a person in our government, Katie, would delete or get rid of 33,000 emails. That gives me a big problem. After she gets a subpoena, she gets subpoenaed, and she gets rid of 33,000 emails, that gives me a problem. Now, if Russia or China or any other country has those emails, I mean, to be honest with you, I'd love to see them. Carrie, how does that look uh, in today's light? I mean, I think it raises questions, right? It raises questions. I think there is so much that when we look at things uh, that we, such as that exchange or the clip you had earlier about him calling on Russia, um, you know, it's why this panel is, is skeptical of, of a lot of the reasons and answers and, and explanations that we've gotten from the White House so far. I think the white lies comment from, uh, from Hope Hicks yesterday, I came in this morning talking to my editors and raised that sort of that idea that, um, you know, after you say that, it's really hard, I think, even for Sarah Sanders to get up there, uh, you know, whenever she does again without the press pressing on that point. What are we to believe? Um, you know, what is true and what's not? Yeah. And it's really put this White House in a very tough position. And it